Uh, good afternoon. What a great delight it is uh, to greet you in the precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, God our Father and the wonderful, sweet Holy Spirit. It is such a great joy to be able to have this medium. I'm so grateful to, for Eugene Edwards for allowing us to be blessed in this marvelous and wonderful way. I just had to connect with you in one way or the other. I can't begin to tell you how much I miss our fellowship, our time of worship, our time of sharing together, and, and how God has just blessed us as a church family. And I'm just so delighted uh, to be able to come and to share this wonderful experience with you. I'm about to say a whole lot of stuff. I don't even know uh, where I'm going. I got my paper in front of me, but you understand your pastor and you know how it is. So to all of the officers, to all of the members, and all the other persons who may uh, hear this video, I do want you to know that God specializes in things that are impossible, and He can do what no other power can do. And of course, I come to you today because you realize and I realize that we are facing a very serious time in our country. It has never, ever been a time such as this. COVID-19 has changed the way we live our lives. And it has exposed us to the fact that there are some wonderful, powerful, awesome things that we have that we have not utilized and we have not tapped into. So now we are beginning to look deep into our hearts, examining ourselves and saying, oh my God, look what the Lord is showing us and how he is opening our eyes to see what it is that we must be about as his people. Amen. This disease has touched our country. It's touched our community. Listen, Minister, uh, Minister Pullum and his wife and son are victims of this disease. And we don't have a clue about other families who've been impacted in this way. And so I come today, I stand today to say to you that God is on our side and that we must trust him. We must believe in him and we must lean and depend on him. So, so the writer of Proverbs says, he says to us, trust in the Lord. I want to, I want to emphasize that today. Trust in the Lord. Now, I'm not going to deal with the rest of verse five or verse six today. I might come back to it, but I don't really know. I'm just, you know, I'm the kind of fella I just do what I'm doing while I'm doing what I'm doing, what I'm doing. And so I'm just grateful to the Lord for this wonderful opportunity. You see, when it says trust in the Lord, this means we are to properly position ourselves to surrender to the will of God. That means the Hebrew word carries with it the idea of being able to, to lean with the full body to lay upon, to rest your whole weight upon another. And so the idea here is, is that you give all of yourself, all of your heart, all of your mind, all of your spirit, everything about you, and you lay it all on the Lord. Hallelujah. It means to prostrate, to lay out uh, before the Lord in a marvelous and wonderful way. And the writer says, trust in the Lord. Yeah. Capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. Yeah. The word, uh, the word for Jehovah. Hallelujah. Somebody. Uh, and I saw, and so I'm, I'm just so, I'm just so thankful and grateful to the fact that God wants you and he wants me to put our trust in him. Don't, don't pay attention to all the stuff that's around you and all the difficulties you're going through and all the storms you might be facing. Look up, look to the Lord. Please know that He is our help, He is our hope, and that we have nobody else who can help us now. And so I'm just so grateful to be able to turn you 
on to the Lord and for you to be able to know that you can put your trust in him in a marvelous and wonderful way. Uh, by the way, I, I took the word trust and I just kind of worked on it just a little bit. I, I didn't do too much with it, uh, but I most certainly want to share it with you on this blessed day. Uh, T stands for testifying. Somebody say testifying. Hallelujah. That is living to honor God each day by telling others about him. The opportunity to be able to tell somebody else what God did for me, <laughs> he can do for you. The R is for renewing. It's the idea of repenting from sin because God is holy. He is righteous. He is consecrated. He is a God who is pure. And so God says, what you got to do is, I come to renew you. I come to make you whole. I come to make you better. The you is for understanding, growing in the word of God to become just like God. Oh, I get excited when I think about the fact uh, that the Lord is helping me to be just like him, to be holy, to be righteous, to be just, to be loving, to be gracious, to be merciful, to be long-suffering, to be good, to, to, to just go crazy. Hallelujah. So you get a chance to, to know that you grow in the Lord. And then S is for sacrificing. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, that's right. I'm using the word sacrificing. I know you don't want to hear it, but there it is. When you trust in God, you have to sacrifice. That is, be willing to give our life for God which is our reasonable service. Now you got to know, you see a lot of our problems is that there are times when we think about ourselves, about what we want, about what's good for me, and we aren't thinking about nobody else. But God says, what I want from you is, I want you to be able to put your trust in me and to know that what I want from you is for you to give me, not some of your life, not most of your life, but all of your life. As the songwriter says, all to Jesus, I surrender all to him. I freely give. I will ever love and trust him in the service freely give. And so on this day, I'm challenging you, yes, to trust God, to, to be sacrificial in all that you do for him. And then the T the second T, T number two, stands, the first T is testifying. The second T is transforming. Hallelujah. Surrendering willingly to the, to, to the sanctifying and maturing ministry of the Holy Spirit. Let the Holy Spirit have his way in your life. You see, you're not all you think you are. You see, you ain't got it all together. You got some flaws in your life. You got some stuff going on in your life and you need to be transformed. You need the Holy Spirit to, to work on your mind, to work on your heart, to work on your spirit, to work on your soul. You need the Spirit of God to be able to allow you to be transformed. I'm so glad that the Apostle Paul says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service, and be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So, I'll, you know, you thought I was finished with it. No, I got a few more things I want to say about trusting. And then I got one or two more things I need to say as well. So to trust God involves testifying. That is, putting God first in one's life. It means renewing, that is, realizing that sin must be confessed. Uh, understanding carries the idea of not bound by one's own opinion and one's own ignorance. And then sacrificing has to do with learning to let go of self-control and, and selfishness and all that stuff that kills us. And then transforming is releasing one's self from Satan's control. Amen. Oh, you know, 
all last night as I was sleeping, uh, the Lord was working on me. Uh, I, I was trying to get some rest so that I could be strong enough to stand before you on this day and share this time with you. And over and over in my mind, as I was laying there, God gave me Second Chronicles 7.14 over and over again. It just kept on coming. Now I was asleep. Amen. But the Lord was speaking to me and, and over and over again. So it was clear to me that he gave it to me this morning so I could give it to you this afternoon. Come on now. Come on. Come on. Come on. Oh uh, yeah. Second Chronicles 714. If my people, hallelujah. You see, there is a responsibility that we have as believers. We are his people and the sheep of his pastor. He said, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked way, then they will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sins and I will heal their lands. Who is going to help us now? Who is the healer? Who is the physician? Who's got the medicine? Who's able to handle this virus? The God that we serve is the one who is able to help us even now. Amen, somebody. And then I need to say to you, on Monday morning, hallelujah, I, 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 I was on my way uh, to see the doctor. Many of you know by now uh, that I have cancer and that I'm getting ready uh, to be able to have chemotherapy. Well, on, on Monday, uh, my wife, uh, uh, I came into the room where she was and she said to me, she said, baby, I want you to know that while I was praying, uh, the Lord gave me a scripture. Hallelujah. And I said, well, baby, what was the scripture? She said it was Second Chronicles 714. He gave it to her on Monday and then he came back today to give it to me again. But please understand now, somebody would say, well, wait a minute, preacher. I thought you were the one who received the word of God in the house. I said, well, yeah, I am the one. But on this day, the Lord knew that my wife needed a special word. She needed a word of encouragement, a word of hope a word to know that that she was that, he, that she was in the Lord's hands and so the Lord came with this powerful and awesome words but he not only gave it to her he gave it to her so she could be able to be a blessing to her husband to be able to say to him baby I got a word from the Lord and I'm here to tell you it made all the difference but now I need to tell you now that word came in the morning, and then I had a doctor's appointment in the afternoon. You see, I had a PET scan, and the PET scan showed that there was, uh, uh, there was ca extra cancer in my body. And that's what the doctor said when I went into the office. She shared all that information with me, and then when she walked out, uh, when she walked out, I'm about to close now, when she walked out, uh, hallelujah, somebody. Fanny Crosby came in. Hallelujah. Somebody said, who? Fanny who? I said, Fanny Crosby. You don't know who it is? You know the great hymn writer? She came in. And old Fanny said, now preacher, I got, I got a song just for you. I, I want you to know today that I, I said, Fanny was saying, I don't want you to get discouraged. I don't want you to get dismayed. I don't want you to have your head hanging down. I don't want you to be going around. Oh Lord, oh Lord. She said, oh, no, let's get this thing straight right now. So she said, sing with me. Sing with me. I said, all right, let's go, Fanny. She said, blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Air of salvation, purchase of God, born of his spirit, washed in his blood. So she said, skip the, skip the chorus. A perfect submission, perfect delight, visions of rapture, now based on my sight. Angels descending, bring from above, 
and calls of mercy, whispers of love. Say, skip the chorus. Go, go, go to the next. Perfect submission. All is at rest. I and my Savior, I'm happy and blessed. Watching and waiting, looking above, filled with his goodness, lost in his love. Can I tell you, this is my story. 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 This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. And so we have, if we have members who have needs, you can call your pastor, you can call the officers of the church. We need to make sure that we take care of you. Please let us know where you are and what is happening with you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you and may his countenance have its way in your life. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen, and amen.